Welcome Seekers, you have made it to the Tarot Magician's channel. My name is Ricky, and today I bring you another Pick A Card Tarot reading. Now, if you are a returning subscriber, then welcome back. And if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing for more future Pick A Card Tarot readings just like this one. Hit the notification bell as well. Thank you. Now, today is very special. We're going to talk about um, who you will marry. So we're, we're just going to try and find the zodiac signs. Uh, we're going to check in with their current energy, what they're currently going through, you know, experience, thoughts, feelings. Um, essentially, you know, who is this person, right? Their career, their personality. And if we have time towards the end, how will the relationship be like? So we're going to touch on all of these things. Now, before we get started, I do want to remind you, Seekers, that I am offering private readings at this time. If you are interested in a private reading, the link is going to be in the description below. And you do have to go through my Etsy store to place that, uh, that order. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, Seekers, with this uh, very popular Who Will You Marry uh, video. This is the most uh, requested video in this channel so I'm happy to bring this video to you seekers uh, we have three groups we have group number one we have group number two and we have group number three go ahead and take a moment to select the group that calls to you the most I am going to include the timestamps in the description below so that you can fast forward to your groups Welcome group number one to today's pick a card a tarot reading where we will answer the question who will you marry now before we get started just want to remind you seekers that I am offering private readings at this time if you are interested you will have to go through the link in the description below um, it's a link that's going to take it to my Etsy shop and uh, you, you would have to go through that Etsy store so thank you seekers let's go ahead and move forward we're going to start with a, a the theme of who this person is, right? Who, who is this person that you're going to marry? We're going to find their Astro Realm Crystal. And to do that, we're going to use one of the newer decks that just came out called the Astro Realms Crystal Oracle. So let's go ahead and reveal what this crystal is. Oh, wow. You've got number seven, Hermitite, Root Chakra, Culmination. This is, uh, this is a very interesting, very, very interesting, um, card and crystal and the reason why is because it talks about this person being very grounded very rooted to reality um, there's also a strong strong indication that you know this person is someone who's very connected to mother earth um, this person in many ways excels in in anything that has to do with potentially herbology or anything that has to do with uh, mother earth you know I I'm seeing kind of like this druid person that understands everything, you know, what this plant is good for, what that plant is good for. They're just very good with these things. And, you know, further looking into this card, I feel like this person is someone who is very responsible. You know, when it comes to the root chakra, what we have is responsibility. Um, this is the, the chakra that defines uh, relationships, right? Relationships with Mother Earth and that primal energy that um, essentially moves forward, our basic survival center. Um, and it is also very stable uh, physically and emotionally. So these, these qualities are very strong with this person that you are going to marry. Um, they have a very strong work ethic. Um, also, there's a, a deep spiritual connection as well. So, you know, this is the card of ascension, bigger realms, grounding. Um, so very interesting that this is essentially the, you know, the, the, the card that's going to, re that's representing this person of yours. Very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and throw some tarot and we are going to use a new tarot deck today as well called the Rose Tarot. Uh, so let me show you guys. This is the secrets of the Rose Tarot by Nigel Jackson. Um, very beautiful, 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 beautiful deck. 
So we're going to use that to give us a little information about this person and we're going to reveal their zodiac. So let's start with current energies, right? Let's get an update on this person. I mean, I've done this reading for you seekers before for the, the seekers that are, are subscribed to the channel. Um, so let's try and get first an update of what they are currently going through and experiencing in their lives. Let's see. Oh my. Well, um, and I wish it was better news, but they are going through uh, heartbreak at this moment. Uh, group number one, the person that you are going to marry is heartbroken. Um, and um, the reason why they're heartbroken is because they 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 have to start new. There's something new that they have to start a uh, new project, potentially some kind of new, you know, um, ambition. And um, they're having a very hard time moving past, uh, you know, that change. It's like they don't want that change to come, even though they know that the change is necessary. So you know, we see that reflected and illustrated here with. Um, the Three of Swords card, right? So Three of Swords talks to us about heartbreak, uh, a little bit of chaos. We have essentially a person that is completely devastated. Uh, we have a heart pierced. That's what the Three of Swords is talking about. Just heartbreak, right? This existential crisis, and um, we just can't get away from that pain. And so, you know, one of the one of the reasons why it could be because they're ready for something new in their lives. Okay, they're ready for a new change. They're ready for something new and illuminating, which is why we've got this death card showing up, right? So the death card shows up to tell us that it's time to move. It's time to change. And the the reason why this is such an important card is because it is a major arcana. So it talks about a major major life event. And so they're going through this almost need for change. To the point where they're being pushed uh, for that change. They're being pushed for this new experience to come quickly in their lives, and they are heartbroken by it. Um, you know, I think that this is the kind of person that's not going to show that they're heartbroken. This is the kind of person that um, keeps this to themselves in some way. Um, and it's not that uh, they have trouble sharing it or that they have some kind of emotional trouble. It's just that they understand the natural flow of life and they know that the only true thing that there really is is change, right? Change from stasis, change from um, the inability to move or just change in general. And so they're going through this process of change, but it doesn't take away the fact that, you know, there is a bit of heartbreak involved with that change, you know? Um, but ultimately, it could just be a realization that they need to go through this change. Uh, but it's just been a lot more chaotic and a little harder uh, to go through it, right? So um, let's go ahead and see, now that we know exactly what they're currently going through, let's see who this person is. And then we're going to talk about their career. We'll go a little deeper into who this person is. So we're gonna, I'm shuffling right now. All right, who is this person? Let's talk about their personality. Let's talk a little bit about uh, maybe potentially what they've been through. All right, who is this person? All right, wow. So uh, you've got uh, someone that's being represented by the King of Cups, and this is truly, truly dynamic. You know, anytime you have a person being represented by this bountiful, beautiful, loving King, what you have is a very special person. You know, this is someone who loves the arts, loves the beauty. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this person enjoys going through to artistic places. Um, and art to them is almost subjective. It doesn't have to be the kind of art that uh, people would normally think of art. You know, like they think of the Louvre. People go there and they like to see that. Uh, art from Da Vinci. It doesn't have to be that. It can be all kinds of art, right? Music, um, just expression of self. There, there's art everywhere. And so what this King of Cups does is that this king is able to identify that art and speak to the roots of that art and the, and the beauty of that art and potentially how that art has shaped and molded our culture. So this person is just very, I would say someone very deep, very emotionally stable, and, and ready. Now, the fact that we've got the Knight of Cups reversed right after the King of Cups, um, you know, I feel like the message there is twofold. Number one, um, it's talking about them and their desire to help other people. So what we have is a young representation 
right? A, a very young, immature um, person here with his Knight of Cups. And the fact that we've got this King of Cups who's looking directly at him just kind of tells me that there's this need or desire to help the youth, to help people move forward, and to help to help them su succeed, right? Now, the message is further, further, further exemplified with the Six of Cups. The Six of Cups is talking about relationships. And so it's right in the middle. So this person likes just to, you know, create relationships with potentially younger people that are lost emotionally, um, people who just need a little help, you know. And uh, this person likes to use their wisdom, their guidance, their ability to love very profoundly to bring this Knight of Cups out of that energy of despair and darkness and instability that they're currently going through emotionally. So that's the first interpretation, right? And it's the most powerful one because the Six of Cups really gives us that understanding of needing that or wanting that connection or someone who's just a very, very good friend. That's what the Six of Cups is essentially talking about. A very good friend, someone that excels in this area. So you're, the person that you are going to marry is a good, good, good friend. Uh, more than likely you're going to notice that they have a very dynamic circle of people um there's this uh circle of people that really love this king of cups and i mean love like they they really want to be around them they're inspired by them and, and that's the the energy that this king brings now the second interpretation that i'm seeing here is they themselves being the knight of cups reversed right so what we have here with the knight reversed is someone who's very again immature going through some troubles emotionally so this knight of cups is on their horse trying to find something right they're trying to to reach a place of stability in their lives and so the fact that we've got him showing up here and we have him essentially reaching the king of cups you know this person has had to go through a lot of struggle emotionally they've had to grow up potentially quicker than most um, I just feel like, you know, this person has had to go through the ups and downs of life. And so that's the reason why there's such a powerful, powerful presence at this current time with this King of Cups, because they've had to go through this. And so they've had to make peace with, with the world. They've had to make peace with their internal darkness. They've had to make peace with the exterior darkness. And now they're in a place where they can actually be of service to society. They can move forward. They can accept their place in the world. And, um... It's almost like, you know, I'm sensing a very strong, strong, responsible energy filled with love and care for others. And um, it's interesting. So, you know, this heartbreak could definitely be because of someone, like an actual person. Maybe some someone has passed away recently in their lives and they're still kind of mourning this, right? Because this person is someone that really enjoys relationships with people. Again, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a very close circle of friends that are just very, very close that admire him, um, but this person is more than likely going to be a very strong family-oriented person. They want to have that family around. They want to make sure that everyone's happy, content, filled with joy, and, and just prosperity. So very beautiful energy, very beautiful energy with this uh, with this King of Cups. All right, so we're going to go ahead and reveal the zodiac signs towards the end. But right now we're going to just continue talking about them. Let's talk about their career. Let's see what they're doing as far as their um, careers. And um, let's see what the, the tarot can reveal to us. All right, so career. What do we got? What do we got? Okay, so Queen of Swords and the Ace of Batons reverse. That's interesting. Okay, so the Queen, the, uh, the queen of Swords is um, the the queen that likes to talk right the, the queen that essentially brings change and stability to people on more of a verbal or maybe written sense so this is the person that writes a book this is the person that writes blogs this is the person that writes uh for some kind of um publishing company um you know maybe the this is someone who is essentially um involved with the the arts as well you know the queen of swords she is involved in the arts whereas she might be able to 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 us to assist people with her art but there's always an underlining problem that the queen of swords has to fix or has to essentially bring light to so 
you know, whatever artistic venture your king is currently kind of going through here, I feel like they are in some ways trying to be an impact or to fix a problem in the world. So think of a journalist, right? Um, print media, for example, or someone who's involved in uh, maybe podcasting or someone that's using their actual voice to inspire people. So they excel with they excel in communication. They're helped with the King of Cups because you know a person that's in touch with their emotions knows what they want and they're stable in every way with that root chakra. Um, this is a person that has all of the tools necessary to help inspire people, to help people move out of any kind of darkness or despair, right? And so with the Ace of Wands, which here is the Ace of Batons, <laughs> um, reversed, it talks about a fire being, uh, being essentially turned off, right? It's like a fire that's being quenched. This is a fire that is um, needing to be essentially sparked and the the lack of that spark so i feel like that spark is what this person brings to the individual to people so on a career level this is the type of person that inspires and motivates people to be the best versions of themselves right um let me fix the board for a quick moment here all right there we go so this is the kind of person that really helps motivates inspires people to move forward D dynamically, you know, the Ace of Photons is definitely the card of dynamism moving forward with true, true, true power and almost authority. Um, and, and, you know, this is the spark of life. This is the spark of a new venture. So potentially this person is an idea generator. You know, this person solves problems, helps people find the problems in their lives. Uh, so that they can just kind of put things together and move forward effectively. So on a career level, this is what this person does. Um, if I had to choose a career, uh, journalism, print journalism, a writer, a blogger, uh, maybe an author, you know, this is someone that writes and um, not only writes, but also potentially inspires with their words and, and speech, right? Um, you know, for the first time uh, in the history of humanity, the spoken word is stronger than the written word. Uh, and so I feel like this person is really tapping into that, right? And, and utilizing that to move people forward on a very, very, very almost mental level. All right. So let's go ahead and throw some more cards. Let's see. What can we touch on now? So, um... We're going to go ahead and talk about the the Zodiac. So we're going to throw three Zodiac cards and we're going to try and figure out, you know, potentially what their sun, their moon and their rising um, are. But um, it could be in any order. So we're just going to throw three cards. All right. I've, I've got these little printouts. So we're going to throw the first one and we've got here Sag. All right. Let's see if, you can, if it comes into focus. So the first one out is Sagittarius. Very interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and do the second one. Let me see so you guys can see it. There we go, Sagittarius. And the second one is Virgo. All right. I, myself, am a Virgo, sun and moon. So awesome. And we definitely do see that earth energy here with uh, with this root chakra. So let's go ahead and throw one more. We have Aquarius. Yes. And we're going to put that Aquarius right under that King of Cups, right? All right. So that is beautiful. We've got uh, Aquarius, Sag, and a Virgo. So again, that could be their um, sun, their moon, their rising, any combination of those three. Now, we're going to go ahead and throw an Oracle card. I just want to get a little more information about this person, right? Just a little bit more information. And then we're going to move into how the relationship will be like. Uh, but we're going to throw an Oracle card from the Sacred Light Oracle by Anna Stark. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and let uh, these Oracle cards give us a little information, more information about this person of yours, the person that you are going to marry. Wow, so you've got Ascension Flame. Uh, look at this. So the Ascension Flame is talking about liberation, right? A sense of greater purpose, high expectations. That is beautiful. So 
that is very dynamic and it's good that we, we we left this card for the end because it's talking really about their career and their desires and their wants right so what we have here is essentially someone who wants to excel in life you know there's a strong motivation a strong drive uh and a strong ambition to be truly great and so what that kind of boils down to is someone who in many ways is trying very hard and very diligently to help and assist right so they do it so so beautifully because they also want to be able to help people right it's like if it's advantageous to them and advantageous to society as a whole it's the best possible outcome for them so it's almost like with this ascension flame they're trying to create a very strong foundation underneath them that they can build on and so you know there's a, a true sense of greater purpose with this person they, they know that they're destined for something truly dynamic um, the fact that we've got the word liberation makes a lot of sense with their career queen of swords ace of batons reverse so we have someone who really wants to liberate the mind free the mind of problems and chaos and worries and so it, it ties in with the Knight of Cups and the King of Cups, right? Because they've had to overcome a lot of challenges emotionally, a lot of a lot of blockages. They've had to, to find resolutions to a lot of chaos in their lives to reach this King of Cups. And so now it's they know that they have the ability to use that knowledge to help other people. So that's where that sense of greater purpose comes from. Um, that's where that liberation comes from. They want to liberate people from their mental problems their 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 emotional blockages uh, you know their in their 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 instability and the fact that we've got the last keywords there being high expectations they put a lot on themselves right they expect a lot they 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 work and they strive expecting to be great in everything that they do and so there there's high 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 expectations right so very beautiful, very dynamic. And I feel like, you know, with this reading, one thing that I'm noticing is I feel like, you know, spirit is really trying to help this person progress. Spirit is really trying to move this person forward. There's this initiation that's taken place with this person. There's the, a journey that this person is being kind of uh, taken through, right? Which is really, really, truly exemplified with the Three of Swords and the Death card representing their current state. They're going through some very, very drastic change. And so anytime someone goes through drastic change, what ends up happening is that there's friction, right? There's that initial stage where, you know, it's like, oh, I'm leaving something behind. Uh, there's dread. There's a little bit of heartbreak. Ultimately, that dissipates. It goes away. But it's like this person is going through that dynamic change. And I think that it's necessary for their development. And so obviously, you know, if you haven't met this person, if you're watching this reading and you are potentially envisioning uh, more of a future with this person, if they're not there with you, then obviously, you know, this is leading them to you. So there, this is almost a step forward um, for them. They're essentially getting closer to you for those of you that are watching. Um, so that's very, that's, that's very special. Let's go ahead and throw another Oracle card and I want to see what their animal spirit is. What is their animal spirit, their animal guide? Um, you know, this could be just an animal guide that they're working with right now that is present for them currently. But we're going to use the uh, Spirit Animal Oracle by Cully uh, Baron Reed. Um, or this could just be a very strong animal guide that is always present with them. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here we are. Oh, the dragonfly. That's interesting. So we've got dragonfly spirit here. Truth transcends illusions. Number 22. That is a beautiful, beautiful message. Truth transcends illusions. So that is interesting. Um, it, it gives us more information on this person's destiny, on this person's purpose. Because now we have here a dragonfly uh, saying that truth is essentially what's going to break people, people free of whatever illusions they've built that essentially is holding them back or keeping them in a place of instability and possible chaos. So this person is operating in truth. It's funny that it's right next to the Queen of Swords because the Queen of Swords, it's, 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 you know, she's known for truth. 
She's known to be very harsh. She's known to be someone that tells you what you need to hear so that you can transform your life in a very dynamic way. There's no sugarcoating with the queen. The queen delivers the message as the queen sees it. And so I feel like this person is in many ways the, the kind of person that will tell you the truth to your face, right? So that you can change. There's no malice there. There's no evil behind it. There's simply transformation for your development, for your mental process, for your emotional development. Um, you know, many times we hear lies. We hear lies from tarot readers. We hear lies from family members. We hear lies from friends that want to, in some ways, not hurt our feelings, but we, we don't get the truth. We, we hardly ever truly get the truth. Um, some people want to just uh, make sure that you feel happy for that very moment, uh, while at the same time knowing that if uh, they can tell you this, it might assist you, it might help you move forward. Um, but they don't because they want to keep you happy in that moment and happy with them and uh, get you to, to, to essentially keep being their friend, you know. So I get the feeling that this person is the complete opposite of that, you know. And, and I feel like the reason why their, their group is small is because they've been able to help people so dynamically that those people kind of stay. But also they're not the kind that keeps a lot of people around because the truth sometimes hurts and it keeps people from coming to them. Um, but also there is a talent here, there is an art for them delivering that harsh truth, which is actually pretty, pretty, um, I would say one of the greater aspects of this King of Cups. This is something that they excel in. They're able to deliver the truth to you, but at the same time, they do it so beautifully, they do it so artistically, they do it with so much love that you feel that energy radiating out of them. And so even though the truth is so harsh, it doesn't feel harsh. It just feels like this person is really trying to assist me and help me. And so that is um, a part of their purpose. You know, I think that it's it's one of their gifts, to be quite honest with you. And um, man, this person is really interesting. They really, they really are. They really are interesting. So let's go ahead and talk about the relationships, right? I, I said if we had a little a little time at the end, we we're going to talk about how this relationship was going to you know, potentially be. Uh, so we're going to do that. We are going to do that. So let's see, let's make some space here. Let's make a little space right here. And let's throw some tarot. How is this relationship going to be like spirit? Okay. How is this relationship going to be like? All right, so you know we've got a few things to say here. This is pretty interesting. Okay, um, so the relationship. So we'll start with the positives. Um, there really aren't any negatives. So I don't want to scare you, but we're going to start with the real, real positive stuff, and then we'll, we'll work our way down. Um, so we start with the Nine of Cups, and we start with the Two of Cups, and I mean those <laughs> those two cards together are just so beautiful, right? Because with the Nine of Cups, what you have is complete soul satisfaction. I mean, this is the card of complete soul satisfaction. This is you having reached a place of complete contentment, right? Um, so obviously what we have here with this Nine of Cups is that you are feeling happy with the relationship, that you are just feeling so joyous, that you want to share and bask in this beautiful love. Literally, your heart is on fire. And then with the Two of Cups, it further illustrates the point that there's so much love and care you know you've got here two twin dragons um, kind of uh, just dancing this rhythmic dance of love and so what you have with the two of cups is pure pure love care for each other um, a very the kind of love that's just you know evolving and changing and almost growing as it changes right very really beautiful now Let's work our way down. So uh, we've got the King of Swords reversed and we've got this, uh, the Nine of Swords upright. So there, this relationship is going to change you very dynamically. All right, so who you are today, you will not be when you meet this person. You know, it's like there's going to be so much maturity, so much change, so much, I would say, experiences gained um, that your relationship is going to mold you into someone completely new. Um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of truths that are going to come out, 
things that potentially you missed about yourself that you know you 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 wish that you knew before but at the same time you know at the same time you're glad that you know them now um, and it's the same for them right so this is the relationship this is what you're gonna do for each other so um, it goes both ways but the king of swords reverse talks about finding those harsh truths um, realizing them potentially feeling like you know he, this person is um, in some ways being somewhat mean but at the same time you're feeling like okay that is true and the reason why I'm so hurt is because it is true right um, so harsh truths with this king of swords coming out leading to transformation leading to change now one of the reasons why I think that you know you're gonna feel a bit uncomfortable with these things that are going to come out is because of the nine of swords right so the nine of swords talks about these uncomfortable truths that lead to these mental um, a little, you know, little mental anguish um, just um, anxiety fears and worries uh, but at the same time, you know, it's like the, this is it almost feels like this energy is transitory This energy is just something that you go through But at the same time, it's not going to be the staple and the foundation of the relationship The first card out is the nine of cups. So the foundation of the relationship is love Understanding care for each other. There's a sense of true true surrender surrender of emotion surrender of, uh, of just everything, right? Also, there's a strong connection to this divine source. So I feel like you two are gonna just have a lot of similarities. Um, you know, if you are on a twin flame journey, I feel that potentially, just potentially, uh, this person might be a twin flame because when I see these harsh realities and this dynamic change that occurs, um, it could very well be a twin flame journey even though twin flames don't uh, essentially always are romantically involved that might be the case for some of you um, but anyways you know with soulmates it's the same thing right you're always going to go through dynamic changes you're always going to go through um, this complete and utter change that just essentially turns you into a new person and uh, you know two of cups nine of cups what we have here is the energy of Two people becoming one almost with the two of cups and the nine and the nine of cups. You two are going to be one mind, one soul, one spirit. You're going to in some ways inspire each other, and you're going to in many ways do almost the same things together. You're going to always want to be around each other. Uh, there's a strong, strong connection between the two of you here. Okay, so this is a a very beautiful relationship. I feel like. Um, this person is just so so dynamic and you are gonna see when you meet them they're 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 the kind of person that just you know transforms your life completely so beautiful energy I hope that you enjoyed this reading thank you for watching um, again it, just quick reminder I am offering private readings so if you're interested in a private reading the link is gonna be in the description below um, also comment down below let me know what you thought about this reading if you have any ideas for for future pick a cards that'd be great but ultimately, I just want to know what you guys are up to. All right. I've been responding to you. If you've left the comments in the past, you know, I've been responding. So you know that I'm reading your comments. Uh, I'd like to continue that. So comment down below. Also, don't forget, give the video a like. Smash the like button as much as you can. Please help me out. Give that uh, algorithm a reason to share the video by giving the video a like. Thank you, Seekers, for your love. Thank you for consistently um, showing up, for supporting me. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this reading. Bye-bye. Welcome group number two to today's Pick a Card Tarot reading. Uh, where we will be answering the question, who will you marry? Um, now, before we get started, I do want to remind you, Seekers, that I am offering private readings at this time. If you are interested, the link is going to be in the description below. Um, you will have to go through my Etsy shop to be able to place that private reading request. Thank you. All right, so let's go ahead and get started, Seekers. We're going to actually use a pretty special Oracle deck. came out not so long ago. This is going to be essentially the theme of the person that you are going to marry um, 
when I mean theme, I just mean like it's going to be a strong, strong representer of who they are at their core. You know, this is uh, a crystal oracle, essentially a crystal oracle reading. All right, so we're going to try and get as much information as we can from this one card. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so you've got the moon, transition, and calcite. This is a very interesting combination. And the reason why is because it talks about uh, a feel or a need to become deeply connected to inner self and an understanding of emotions. You know, this is a, a feeling of a shift or, or a shift in priorities and beliefs. Um, so I feel like, you know, with this card representing the person that you're going to marry, it tells me that the person that you're going to marry is someone who likes to go through different changes. They know that they have to go through these changes in order to be completely transformed, in order for them to be of service to the world, the people around them. Um, there's also this strong intuitive nature about this person. It's, it's like they receive messages from their guides. They're able to fully follow that advice because they know that it's what's best. It's what's going to lead them to greener pastures. So there's a sense of mastery with the person that you're going to marry here with this card. Um, it's almost like the fact that they're being represented by the moon tells me that there is this spiritual tra transition that they are, that they go through. You know, I feel like maybe this is something that's going to happen later on in their lives, potentially when they meet you, or it's something that's just constant, right? They're constantly going through spiritual changes and transformations so that they can, in some ways, evolve and blossom into something completely new. So interesting. You know, this person is in many ways um, magical. You know, they're, it's like they're able to manifest greatness in their lives through some kind of power that they are able to tap into, right? And it, and it, it does have to do with the power of the moon. Interesting. All right, so we're going to go ahead and throw some tarot. Now, the tarot that we're going to use is uh, called the Rose Tarot. Let me show you guys the um, box. So, the Rose Tarot, The Secrets of the Rose Tarot by Nigel Jackson. Um, I really like this tarot deck. I don't use it much, but um, we're going to use it for this uh, reading. And we're going to start by asking what they're currently going through. So, you know, if you if you are already a subscribed member of this community, you've probably seen the other uh, Who Will You Marry videos that I've done. So what I'm going to try and do for you guys differently is I'm going to try and tell you what they're currently going through right now um, to get a general understanding of what they are feeling, experiencing, thinking, you know, emotional state. So I'm shuffling now. And here it is, current energies. Hmm. Wow. All right. So a lot of stability here. You know, we've got temperance and we have the three of batons. You know, I get the feeling that uh, your person, the person that you're going to marry, is going through a period of balance. They're trying to, at the very least, they're trying to find that balance. And I think that they've already reached it. You know, with the temperance, what you have is a sense of just enjoying the present moment not worrying about anything other than what is in front of you, other than what you can control. There's a sense of connection with uh, a divine source. There's an understanding of the cycles of life, the ebb and flow. And so now it makes perfect sense, right? The ebb and flow of the moon, the 28 cycles of the moon. It's like this person understands that there is a time for everything. They understand that there is divine timing at play in everything, right? In every aspect of life. So it looks like they've reached that understanding, that, that knowledge. You know, we've got here the three of batons as well. The batons are the, the wands. So the three of batons is talking about the ships coming in. So they are experiencing at this moment a period of stability, a period of growth, a period of having put in work and receiving what they are owed, receiving blessings from that work that they've um, essentially put in. So interesting. It looks like they're going through a period of stability at this current time. So that is great. Group number two, um, you know, you know, group number one uh, was much different. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, for group number two, you know, we essentially have here someone who is currently just going through these positive energies. Um, let's go ahead and look a little further into this person. Let's see. We're going to talk about, you know, their, their personality, their career. 
And if we have time towards the end, how will the relationship be like? All right, so let's see, who is this person? Let's see if we can get more information, Spirit. Who is this person? Okay. Wow. All right, so let's stop here and then we'll we'll continue but we'll let's talk about these three cards these are some pretty dynamic energies we've got the ten of coins reversed the two of swords reversed and then the judgment card right upright so very strong strong energy here um you know when i look at this i get the feeling that your person it has just gone through so much struggle They've made a lot of bad decisions in their lives, and um, it's definitely uh, exemplified or illustrated with the Two of Swords. It's, you know, they've had decisions to make, and they just haven't made a lot of good decisions. And I feel like their power has been taken from them more than once, and that has left them feeling vulnerable, exposed, possibly humiliated. And so these experiences have uh, molded them, shifted them to the point where they have been able to reach a place of mastery um by going through that kind of dark night of the soul or just you know negative experience it's like they've come face to face with malevolence and they've had to face it head on you know they've had to vanquish that dark dragon that has come to destroy them and they've won which is the beautiful part of it and that victory is illustrated with the judgment card and i love this um illustration of the judgment card because what you have here is a phoenix rising from the ashes right that is such a beautiful illustration of judgment. I really do like it. And, um, you know, what we have here is, is also a revival with all of the other people coming out of what seems to be graves. Um, you know, they're, they're exposed and in many ways they are happy. Happy that this is uh, going on, right? There's a rebirth happening. And we have here the Archangel Michael uh, blowing that trumpet. So, you know, it's like, in many ways, I feel that this person has had to go through some struggle to get to where they are today. That is, I think, a part of all of our stories, right? We all have to go to some kind of journey, some kind of hero's journey. And at the end of that hero's journey, hopefully, if we do get there, um, we're, we're able to, in some ways, be of blessings to other people. It's the story of the shaman that essentially has to go through the dark forest and defeat or uncover the darkness there, understand it, and then come back and explain that to the people around them so that they can gain knowledge and understanding of what's there. Uh, this is what has brought society forward. It's uh, what has made us what we are today. And so I feel like this person you know, has had to go through this, right? They've had to lose it all. The fact that we've got the 10 of coins which is uh, the Ten of Pentacles in, um, in the traditional deck. The Ten of Pentacles and the Ten of Coins is talking about a family, right? So it looks like they've come from very humble beginnings. Uh, they, they didn't have a lot of these coins, unfortunately, as they were growing up. And so, you know, they've had to strive, they've had to work, they've had to, in some ways, you know, be present, be diligent, be available to anything that you know, it was, it was present so that they can in some ways make ends meet. And that was a very difficult thing for them, right? It, it, it molded them and it shaped them. A lot of people are destroyed by that kind of energy. Uh, this person excelled in it. But, you know, it, it did come with a lot of bad decisions. I think that the fact that um, we have this Ten of Coins reverse and this Two of Swords reverse tells me that they didn't have a lot of tutelage or they didn't have uh, maybe a, a person that they can count on or depend on. You know, maybe they, they, they had a lack of a father figure in their home. Um, and uh, this led them to essentially not understand how life works truly, right? It ended up impacting or stunting their growth to the point where it was just slow. Their development was slowed when you don't have that. Um, you, when you don't have that guidance, it's very difficult to get ahead. It's very difficult to know what you ought to do and when to do it. And, you know, it's like anything that you um, encounter in life ends up catching you by surprise, right? There's just so much one can read. Um, once you're actually confronted with the reality of the world, well, that, that can either destroy you, you can grow from it, you know, you can go through a period of instability and um, rise above, 
Um, and I feel like that this person did just that. This person rose above. They, they had to go through this process and they did very well. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about their career and their personality. Right? Um, I, I think one of the things that I, that I didn't touch on was their personality. So let's talk about career and personality. All right. So we've got the Eight of Cups and we've got the Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups reversed, Eight of Cups upright. So this is interesting. The, the Ten of Cups talks about family, family relationships. You know, this is the energy of a of a marriage, you know, here with the Ten of Cups and, you know, we see it illustrated here with two people, right? Um, so the fact that it's reversed and showing up in a career reading, a little mini career reading that we're doing, tells me that there are relationship problems that this person might be helping or assisting in. All right, so, you know, it could be that this person is in some way, some, uh, you know, like a therapist, a family therapist, family counselor. Um, this person is in charge of bringing, you know, these two people together and maybe talking about their, their troubles and their limitations and their darkness or, you know, ultimately I feel like potentially at some point in their lives, they're going to create content that's geared to marriages, that's geared to the family unit. And um, they may not even realize that they're doing that, but essentially that is one of their purposes. They're, one of their purposes in this world is to bring families together. And so that's very interesting. Um, now the Eight of Cups talks about a little further, a little further uh, into this, right? It's like the Eight of Cups is the energy of going through this journey through your emotions. The Eight of Cups is shedding the old skin and uh, making space for what's coming, what's new. So the fact that we've got that again in a career reading tells me that there are things that these people that he's helping or that, that your person is helping um, are having to leave behind negative emotions, you know, uh, getting rid of that old skin, going through the energies of the Eight of Cups, which is a journey. Um, here we see an illustration of a journey through a, um, a bridge you know there's a lot of like chaotic water underneath that bridge which is a symbolism of their emotional state and just overcoming those emotional turbulences uh, that emotional insecurity and reaching the palace right over there at the very far end and that palace is a symbol of emotional stability we see the rainbow in the background which is uh, a sense of being connected with spirit and understanding that um, we are more than our parts, that we are more than our experiences and our relationships. In many ways, they, they, they mold us, they shape us, they help us grow, um, they, they help us interact with ourselves and the world as well. And so it's almost like there's a, a maturity that your person helps these people go through with this Eight of Cups and this Ten of Cups. Interesting. All right, now let's talk a little bit more about their, their personality because we can definitely take more from that Ten of Coins, that Two of Swords, and that Judgment. Um, you know, I feel like um, this person is someone who is involved or likes to, to assist people. You know, this is the kind of person that maybe gets involved in projects. Um, they're also a no-nonsense kind of person as well. I'm just getting some very strong, strong, no-nonsense vibes. Uh, I don't think this person um, entertains uh, fools gladly. You know, it's like this person likes to, they like to, to have order in their space. They like to have order in their home. They like to have order all around them. And it's the kind of order that is very foundational, right? There's boundaries. This is a person that, that sets boundaries very well. Um, and again, you know, the fact that their career is tied to them helping these relationships and these people, it, it gives me a sense that they are very emotionally advanced, right? They're able to process things on a very deep, deep level. And so this kind of helps them through transition. And it's interesting, right? That word transition, because the key word associated with this card 
is transition. So in many ways, it's uh, a, there's a strong representation of that word inside of them, right? They know what transition entails. They know what a breakup entails. They know what a newness entails. And so it's like they understand the process of it. And it's almost like they help people get through it. Very interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about their zodiac sign so let's see this one is uh, i know it's very interesting to a lot of you seekers um i haven't done this before i think i've done this maybe twice in other readings but we're going to do it here we're going to try and find their zodiac sign so this is obviously you know i'm going to throw three cards so we're going to get three different zodiac signs this can be their moon i mean this could be their sun their moon or their rising right so any combination of this so let's start we've got Libra, definitely strong Libra vibes going on here with these tarot cards, so awesome. We've got Libra, alrighty. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what else. Let's throw another one. All right, we have got Aries. Aries, Aries, Aries. And the final one, we have got Taurus makes sense yes Taurus okay so Taurus Libra Aries could be any combination could be their Sun could be their moon could be their rising so interesting Taurus Libra Aries um, all right so let's go ahead and throw some Oracle cards right so let's start with the oh, the sacred light Oracle we're just gonna try and gain more understanding of who this person is okay this is by Anna Stark that's all we're trying to do here. Who is this person? Let's gain a deeper understanding of who they are. Let's see. Oh, wow. All right. I like that card. Light Seeker. So you're, uh, the person that you are going to marry is a Light Seeker. And so the key words that are attached to this person is uh, Light Quest, Visionary, Mental Strength, and Resilience. So this is a very interesting, very interesting energy with this person. So um, let's talk about this, right? So the first key word there, uh, light quest. I get the feeling that it's that's tied to their career, to their purpose here on Earth. As I mentioned before, this person is here to fix relationships, fix families, help them go through a period of insecurity and instability so that they can, they can get past that bridge, right? to the other side and make it to that castle, make it to that promised land. And so in many ways, this person comes into a relationship and takes them on a journey. And the journey is to try and find the light, try and find that goal at the end of the rainbow. And so there's a quest that, that you know, that they have to go through. And the fact that we have the, the, the second keyword being visionary, you know, in order to be able to, to get to that point, you have to have vision. You have to see the issues melting away. You have to try and see the instability, the insecurities, the darkness that is gripping people so that you can address it, so that you can essentially help them get through that situation, right? So there's this strong sense that this person is someone who shines the light on the shadows, the shadows that grip the mind, the shadows that keep you emotionally bound to something dark they're able to find those shadows, they're able to find that darkness and shine that light. And that's what makes them so powerful. And in order to be able to do that, they have to have a lot of mental strength, which is another key word attached to that card. Mental strength, mental acuity. And then the last key word is resilience, right? You have to have patience, right? You have to be resilient because one thing that's for sure, a shadow and, 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 and a darkness that whenever you expose it, it's never going to want to come easily, right? Uh, there's a quote out there that says, there's no one more hated than the man that tells the truth. And that is, I mean, spot on. Because when you are able to identify a shadow and you communicate that to someone, they get defensive. They don't want to admit it, right? Everyone wants a beautiful, positive message. They want the unicorns. They want the butterflies. They want the nice, beautiful rainbow. No one hardly ever wants to hear anything bad, right? And, you know, sometimes we just don't have the emotional maturity to handle it, right? You, you Like, I can do a very positive, positive reading, but if I say one thing that's bad, 
you know, a person might get triggered by that because they don't want to hear anything bad. They just want to hear good, good, positive, 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 positive news, right? And that's, it's a very unbalancing kind of energy. And so I feel like this person is resilient where they're able to assist people through that. They're able to actually expose some of the shadows, explain what those shadows are doing, and take that person by the hand and walk past that bridge, right? And, and just help them get rid of that shadow so that their lives can actually be fully transformed and they can carry on with their lives effectively. They can carry on with their lives successfully. And so that, you know, in many ways you have to be resilient because nowadays people just don't, uh, they, they cling on to their shadows, they cling on to their darkness, they don't want it exposed. Um, and so it requires mental strength, it requires resilience, and the person that you are going to marry, you know, this person really has this, right? This person really, really, really has this. And, you know, they have a very strong purpose here. Very beautiful. So let's go ahead and throw some more oracle cards and see what else we can see with uh, this person that you were going to marry. Let's t let's throw an animal spirit. Let's find out the animal spirit that's accompanying this person that you're going to marry. So we're going to throw the spirit of the animal oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Let's see what spirit animal is accompanying them. What is their spirit animal? This can be a spirit animal that's been with them since birth it could essentially be a spirit animal that um, just represents their you know their quest or their purpose it could be transitory let's just see what comes through <laughs> the panther look at this the panther are you kidding me so there's dual symbolism with this panther right and it's worth talking about so you've got the number 44 on top the number 44 is the card of the master healer, right? So this person is in every way, shape, and form a master healer. They're able to assist people. So Panther Spirit, reclaim your power is the message of the Panther. And so, you know, I feel like this Panther is, number one, they're very elegant, all right? The, you know, the one, one thing that I, that I always see with these um, spirit animals is that the spirit animal also is a physical representation of the person, right? It's not only just internally, but it's also on an exterior level, like the, the energy that they bring out into the world. And so the panther is very elegant. And so there is an elegance with this person that you are going to marry. When people see them, that's the first thing that they notice, the way they walk, the way they conduct themselves, though the things that they choose to speak about, uh, the way that they sit, the way that they just are able to hold a conversation. So there's an elegance with everything that this person does, and it draws people in. So Panther Spirit, reclaiming your power. We go right back to their quest, right? Light seeker, light quest, visionary, mental strength and resilience, and helping people uh, cross that bridge of despair. So in many ways, they help people reclaim their power. That is their purpose on this earth. And, you know, it's very similar to group one where they've had to grow from it. You know, they've had to go through a period of instability and darkness in their lives. They've had to go through the hero's journey to be able to reach that place, to be able to fully understand and, 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 and use the power that is inside of them. They've had to go through this journey in order to be able to unlock that, right? They've had to themselves go through a quest. And so now that they've been through that quest multiple times, and again, we've got the moon, right? Which is talking about the magic that's associated with them. It's talking about the ability that they have to manifest, the ability that they have to manifest this energy of transition and change. It's very, very interesting, right? Like they're, they are people who who can bring about change really quickly, right? So they themselves, if they know that they need to change something and it's brought into their um, their vision, they see what they need to change, they'll do it quickly, right? Where, where some people, you know, they'll take years to just change one behavior pattern, right? It'll take years for people to do this. And they'll hear the same message over and over and over and over again, they, 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 they won't change. Well, this person, is someone that changes immediately. Um, there's a sense of intuition with the moon, so intuitively they know what's best for them. Obviously, their their purpose is tied to them being connected to something divine, and so I feel like that connection to their higher higher self um, 
guides them and helps their intuitiveness and they know what's best for them they follow through on it they follow through on it and they make the uh, changes quickly so pretty dynamically right and again we have this representation of the phoenix the phoenix is the bird that has to go through a transition a constant transition right burns turns to ashes and out of the ashes the phoenix rises again in all its glory and so in many ways that phoenix is a, a representer of who this person is beautiful wow all right so let's go ahead and i said if we had some time and we do we have a little bit of time left so we're going to go ahead and talk about how this relationship is going to be like um we're just going to see exactly you know what's going to happen in this relationship right see exactly what this relationship will do for you maybe for them i don't know we'll just see what the cards what the cards show us i'm not gonna i'm not gonna forecast anything i just want the cards to talk to a spirit how will this relationship be like So, you know, you definitely have some very interesting energies here. So you've got the Death card reversed, you've got the Knave of Batons reversed, uh, the Nine of Batons reversed, and the Empress reversed. And so, you know, this could be talking about letting go of a lot of things that are hindering you and holding you back, all right? Um, so whoever picked this group, I feel like the fact that there's this energy of transition with this person and so dynamic with them, I feel like they're going to bring that energy into this relationship pretty strongly. And so, you know, one of the things that I think this relationship is going to have to, to come to the realization of is that there has to be, in some ways, uh, a compromise. I think that this person really wants to bring a lot of change, and maybe you're going to be a bit hesitant to. This person might expose your shadows way too quickly. You're not going to be too happy about that. And potentially you might do the same to them, right? And so there is going to be a little friction, I think, early on. But I feel like, ultimately, you two will be very victorious. And um, this relationship will be able to grow and expand. Now let's take a look. Alright, so we've got the Emperor reversed and the Ace of Batons reversed as well. Um, you know, there's definitely structures that are going to be um, destroyed. Um, there's definitely a new energy that is going to be brought into your life. Whoever's watching this, you know, this relationship is going to be very, very transformative for you. Um, you know, ultimately I, I am seeing that there might be some, some, uh, some conflict, right? Um, but I feel that you two are going to be able to, to overcome this. If you really strive, if you really try very hard, um, I feel that this relationship is going to be able to overcome a lot of darkness, right? And so, again, you know, when you get the Empress reversed and the Emperor reversed, it's definitely telling, right? It's telling that there are structures that are going to have to be rebuilt. There's a lot of new things that are going to have to come into the relationship to make it work. Um, it might feel uncomfortable sometimes, right? Which is why you've got the death card reverse, there's going to be an unwillingness to go through this change and this transition. So, you know, you have to, there's going to be a lot of questions that um, you guys are going to have to ask each other. Is this something that you two are essentially willing to go through? And I feel like, you know, this person is very mature in the sense that they're resilient. They have a lot of mental strength They're They have that vision. Um, and so I feel like this person is going to be able to, in, in, in many ways, um, reach a, a conclusion that's going to be amicable, that's going to be uh, beneficial for the both of you. I just feel like, you know, there are going to have, there's going to be some rough patches, okay, in this relationship. So just um, my recommendation is to, to, to just keep working forward, right? Keep, uh, keep moving forward, keep uh, assisting each other in the, the best that you can. Um, don't stay stuck on anything, right? Forgive and forget um, often and understand that, um, you know, you two are people that are, are essentially going on your own separate journeys. And even though you are going to be joined and, and be one, 
there is a sense of just you know you two going off and, and exploring by yourselves and so there might have to be that compromise right where you two are able to fully embrace who this person is and, and who this uh, and, and who you are at your core and uh, just come to compromises in order to avoid any kind of chaotic energy any kind of um, you know unhappiness because for some reason I do feel like there might be moments where you two are gonna feel unhappy with each other and you're gonna want to end things right you're gonna want to just um, walk away from this and so there's always a solution to to these problems there's always going to be a solution it's just about finding those solutions all right so that is what I see here group number two thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed uh, this reading uh, just quick reminder I am offering private readings at this time you will have to go through my Etsy store if you are interested the link is going to be in the description below um, also let me know what you thought about this reading I want to hear from you seekers I want to essentially connect with you I, I want to know uh, what you thought if there's uh, any suggestions or any advice that you can give me for the channel I'd appreciate it comment down below thank you seekers I love you bye bye Welcome group number three to today's pick a card tarot reading answering the question who will you marry now before we get started just want to remind you seekers that I am offering private readings at this time I am going to include the link to where you can access those private readings down in the description you will have to go to my Etsy store thank you seekers now we are going to go ahead and reveal the first card this is an oracle card from one of the newer decks uh, it's the Astral Realms Crystal Oracle. All right, so it's going to represent uh, essentially the the energies associated with the person that you were going to marry. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what those energies are. All right, look at that. So you've got Mercury uh, Cognizance and the Emerald Stone with the person that you're going to marry. That is definitely special. Um, I feel that with this card. What we have is someone that excels in communication. Right? We have someone who is in many ways understanding, uh, someone who's very pragmatic, um, and um, they just, they're really good with, with communicating what they want, and essentially, you know, this is the kind of person that you can count on uh, to help you and assist you if you ever need that assistance. Interesting. So, we are going to go ahead and throw some tarot but it's going to be a different tarot deck i don't think i've used this deck in this channel before it's called the um secrets of the raw of the rose tarot by nigel jackson so let's go ahead and shuffle we're just going to start by asking the question what are they currently going through right so i've done this uh reading before in this channel it's one of the most requested readings and potentially some of you seekers have already gotten that uh, the answers that you wanted so what we're going to try and do here at the very beginning is to see what this person is going through let's see what their current thoughts feelings are let's take a look all right so we're going to throw two cards spirit what are they going through what are they going through all right so, well, we've got um, someone who is in some ways rebuilding, but they feel very happy about it. Interesting. They feel very happy about the rebuild that's taking place in their lives. Um, so we've got the King of Coins reversed, right? So the King of Coins reversed just talks about, I feel, uh, going through a period of instability, you know, um, starting a new, essentially a new foundation. Um, it could mean that investments have had to be made, money spent on ventures, and uh, now it's like you're hoping that things change. And so what we have here with this King of Coins um, reversed and this Nine of Cups upright is the satisfaction of having gone through that experience. So it's pretty strange. I feel like maybe 
you know, the fact that this person had to invest money and, and put effort into this pursuit is something that was long coming, right? It's like they had to do it, they had to go through it. Um, and now it's here and they just feel very happy. By the way, we keep getting eye symbolism. This is now the Nine of Cups and we have here, um, I guess we can call that the eye. Um, and then we also have a representation of the eye right here with the in, in the emerald uh, stone. So it's almost like this person has vision. You know, this person is understanding of uh, conflicts that are going on inside of them, things that need to change on an exterior level or interior level. So it looks like this person is going through some of that dynamic change. They're building a new foundation for themselves so that they can excel in whatever new ventures are coming their way. Really interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and, and find out a little bit about their personality. And if we have time towards the end, we're gonna ask Spirit, how will the relationship be like? If we have time at the end. But now we're just gonna try and find their personality and then their career. So personality, who is this person? Wow. All right. So, you know, this person uh, is someone who I feel has had to go through a period of learning and expansion. You know, now we've got two kings showing up reverse, and that's interesting. It's uh, it's almost like if they've had to go through periods of instability, right? And now we've got the four of coins as well reversed. And that is very interesting because the four of coins talks about foundations. Um, and the fact that it's reversed tells me that potentially this is someone who's been through some rocky foundation so they've had to build uh they've had to start new over and over and over again but i feel like every time they start anew they gain more insight more understanding more um stability in their lives and it, it makes perfect sense uh that this is going on because part of their personality is the death card which essentially means that this is the person that likes change they really, really enjoy change. This is the kind of person that really just goes after new things. And they don't mind spending money if it means starting anew, if it means uh, getting rid of that and, and, and starting and starting this. Uh, you know, they're going through it right now. You know, it's like uh, with the King of Coins, they're, they're, they're going through the rebuilding of a new foundation, a new structure. And... Most people, they would get upset or maybe they'd be a bit depressed or maybe there was anxiety. Not with your person. Your person is happy. <laughs> They're filled with just such blissful happiness and contentment, you know? So, you know, I, I definitely feel like this person is someone who in some ways enjoys doing new things. I wouldn't be surprised if they love to travel to new places, love to go to certain areas um, that pe that they haven't been before. This is the kind of person that buys one of those maps that you kind of scratch off, you know, uh, a portion of, of, of the area where you went to. Um, and, and they, you know, they're just people who love new experiences. I, I feel like this person loves to, loves loves memories memories new experiences that's where the 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 value is that is where they essentially are most happy um and i feel like you know potentially that might be one of the things that holds them back sometimes the reason why we've got the king of swords reversed is essentially because maybe potentially they have not made some very wise investments or wise decisions i feel like they live a life of um, potentially lavish, and um, you know, lavish means traveling to places, living for the experience, and so sometimes with that, you know, there's this energy of just um, being up in the air um, and just flying away, right, and and not even worrying about finding the ground underneath. You just want to be in the air and go higher and higher and higher. Uh, and so I feel like in some, sometimes they can get in trouble where they just, they're, they're having trouble grounding themselves and they're having trouble maybe potentially saving. And so these are things that they are having to kind of deal with and grow through. You know, they're having to find that balance, that dynamic, uh, because it's, it's important to, to be happy. It's important to be content 
chase after the things that you want, but at the same time, you have to have some grounding in reality. And the reality of this world is that, you know, you do have to work, you do have to save, you do have to have some some sense of, of responsibility. And so I feel like that's one of their biggest challenges, you know, but also it makes them very, very fun, very entertaining to be around. Um, this is the kind of person that has a lot of stories, crazy stories to tell. Um, this is the kind of person that loves communicating those stories to people. Um, very just... Uh, a very entertaining figure to be quite honest with you here very entertaining so let's see what they do as far as a career what are they doing with their career 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 well all right so in their career it looks like they are going to be assisting people and making decisions with money, interestingly enough. Um, so, and it's interesting because I feel that to live the life that they live, they have to be really good with money. Uh, let me fix the board here. Yeah, let me fix the board. All right, perfect. So in order to live the life that they live, which is a life uh, of spending and building memories and going places and, you know, you have to be really good with money. And so I feel like, one of the reasons why they are, they're able to have those experiences and they're able to um, actually give into those urges is because they've learned how to squeeze every penny. They've learned the art of turning a dollar possibly into two dollars. And so, you know, this person can very well be an investor. Uh, this person can very well be a day trader, a swing trader. Uh, this person is potentially involved in some kind of uh, market, you know, where they buy low, they sell high, um, or on a more, I guess, familial or direct connection to people, I think that this person might help people uh, with their financial decisions. So we've got the Ten of Coins, which is the family, right? So, you know, this illustration doesn't really show a family, but the Ten of Coins, which is the Ten of Pentacles, usually it's the family unit, it's the, the value and the wealth of a family. Um, that's the the usual illustration. So with the Ten of Coins reverse tells me that maybe the family isn't doing too well financially, uh, of the people that uh, the person that you're gonna marry helps. And so with the Two of Swords, we have here decision-making. So we have power, we have the ability to make a decision, you just have to make the decision. The fact that it's upright, you know, there's an indication that potentially there was some good decision making going on here. So this person might very well just help this family that lacks money make the right decisions uh, financially in order for them to be able to save, to fund the, the, their dreams and the things that they want to do. But honestly, 100%, I feel like they're not going to want to do that. All right, like this is not the kind of person that does this. This is the kind of person that has a career where they, they can work from anywhere. Right? I, I'm seeing this person like on a beach with a laptop and they're trading off of their laptop. You know, they're, they're, they're moving their money around. Um, there's capital allocation going on. Uh, so yeah, they're definitely involved in the financial systems and the financial markets, uh, but this person is not the kind of person that is going to be in an office setting or in a cubicle like i think that they would literally like wither and die if, if that's what you would do it's like that's the equivalent of locking up a bird in a cage you know you can't do that to this person so this person needs freedom they need to know that they can do whatever the heck they want whenever they want um and so their career is just somehow tied to their experiences and their lives and so in some ways you know there is a maturity there but at the same time there might be a lack thereof i think that sometimes they cut corners and they don't really give the priority to to what they need to and that is their trading that is the work and the diligence that's needed in order to learn that skill to fund their ambitious goals which their goal is essentially to just travel and live a life of lavish, but at the same time, you know, I guess you can say a very um, gypsy-like, you know, uh, energy, right? Gypsies, they go from town to town 
and they just kind of enjoy the experiences they they build memories um, but you know this is definitely a very fun person group number three you know this is the kind of person you would want to be around have a drink with um, talk to because you're going to have fun with this person very dynamic you know very interesting uh, so their their whole their whole thing is trying to fund what their ambitions and their you know they have some very very awesome beautiful ambitions you know they want to see the world they want to experience life right they want to get on that plane they want to travel here they want to go there they want to go see that play they want to go to that concert and so it's a life of of moving around doing whatever they want to do um, ultimately the the way that they're going to fund it is by understanding how money works and understanding how our financial system works and so I feel that early on it's like there's there's this building right that's taking place uh, or will take place uh, and and that building essentially means that they are learning how or where to invest that money so to fund what they normally do and um, I think that they will be successful at this I feel that they are going to in many ways uh, come out on top all right so let's go ahead and get a little more information about this person we're gonna throw uh, one of the newer Oracle cards, the Sacred Light Oracle by Anna Stark. We're just going to throw one and uh, let's go ahead and take a look and see what else we can see about this person that you are going to marry. What else? Power of Presence. All right. Look at that. So we were talking about air, we were talking about flying high, and look at that. We've got an eagle there in the background. So power of presence, a power struggle, unlock your potential, authenticity. Interesting, right? So these keywords are very important. Uh, and these keywords, I feel, represent um, what I'm seeing in the tarot very, very, very beautiful and very closely. Um, so number one, a power struggle. You know, that power struggle comes in their desire to live life the way it was designed to be lived and um, I feel very strongly that life is meant to be enjoyed 100% enjoyed now you know obviously there's these there's the there's this whole aspect of you need to work right and sometimes you know when you work you're not going to enjoy your work all that much unless you're a person that enjoys work and the, the thing with this with this person is that they, they really don't enjoy work you know it's like what's the point of work so what they enjoy is to 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 just be free right like like i said this person has this kind of um eagle-like quality where there's expansiveness and um there's forward moving momentum there's agility and they don't like to be caged in any way they want to fly free they want to know they want to move forward and so a job is in many ways the complete opposite of that so the fact that we've got this power struggle tells me that they know what they want they know how they want to enjoy life they know what makes them happy but they know that um you know and if they want to get to that place they have to make potentially some sacrifices maybe get a job save some money while they're while they're working while they're doing what they're doing they have to learn how to potentially invest that money so that they can yield the fruits from it so that they can fund their campaign so that's the power struggle unlock your potential so for them the potential is to live the life that they want how how they want it and then the third key word there is authenticity right it's like this person is not going to wear a, a mask in front of you and tell you that um, and tell the world that this is what I am you know this I feel like this person is not the kind to just sit there and and take it like this is the kind of person that speaks their mind up they say what they want to say when they say it again you know this there's freedom with this person like this isn't the kind of person that would do well or excel well in a corporate environment um, where they have to dress a certain way they have to talk a certain way they have to follow a certain set of guidelines if not then you could risk getting in trouble you'll get ridden up you know you'll get a slap on the head. like i think this person like i said would wither and die in an environment such as that this person needs space to fly if this person wants to come and tell you that you suck to your face they'll come and they'll tell you that you suck like they they don't care um so you know there's a sense of authenticity right it's like this person is just free in every way 
free in thought, free in spirit, um, free, free, free. They can't, they can't be bound. Awesome. All right, so let's go ahead and um, see what their animal spirit is. I, if we get an eagle, I think, I, I think I'm gonna jump. But anyways, we're gonna try and find out what their animal spirit is. Uh, the Spirit Animal Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. Now this could be an animal that's just uh, an, 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 ah, an animal spirit that's currently with them or an animal spirit that um, is accompanying them throughout their entire lives or transitory. We're just gonna see. We're gonna see what animal spirit comes out and what message that animal spirit has about this person. We've got the ants, all right, that's interesting. So we've got the ant, and uh, the ant is one of my favorites because the ant is all about collaboration. So time to collaborate, ant spirit. And so, you know, I feel like this animal spirit might be transitory. This is an animal spirit that they might be working with right now that's trying to teach them how they're going to be able to get to that powerful, dynamic presence of the eagle um, and so I feel like, you know, they're having to reach a place of balance. They're working on reaching that place of balance now, right? Um, the ant is the kind of ant that, that shows this person or cho shows us how to work together in a team to accomplish a goal. And so, you know, this person, like I said, it's, this person is very, very freeing. Like this person is free. This person wants to fly. This person wants to just... In every way, this person just wants to take off, right? And so the problem is that in doing that, they're missing the other side of life. And that other side of life is very grounding. It's earth. It's the it's practicality. And so they're working on that right now. They're working on this. And so the ant spirit, I feel, is a, potentially a spirit that they, that's a, uh, transitory they're just experiencing this right now because they need it they need it to be able to learn a very important lesson uh, and this lesson is grounding right grounding the process how to work together how to use the technologies around you in order to gain some kind of result out of that technology how can we use AI for our betterment how can we partner with a company in order to gain some kind of result from that you know how can we partner with other people so that we can gain from that as well so this person is is learning this and this is the spirit that's with them right now the, the ant spirit all right interesting so let's go ahead and reveal their zodiac huh let's take a look let's take a look let's take a look so zodiac 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 let's start with the first one so again this could be their sun their moon their rising could be any combination. So the first one is Sag, Sagittarius. That's the first one out. Okay. The second zodiac sign is Taurus. Okay. And the third is Pisces. Interesting. All right. Pisces, Taurus. Sag, interesting. All right, so we are going to get a little more information. Um, so we already talked about their career, their personality, current energies, who they are. So we do have we do have a little more time. So we're going to go ahead and talk about this relationship, huh? Let's see how this relationship is going to essentially uh, unfurl. So let's go ahead and shuffle spirit. How will this relationship be like between these two people? How will this relationship be like? What will it look like? Wow. All right. My, 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 you guys, you know, I, I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. The, the energies of this person, you know, they're very wild in some way, so I thought that there might be troubles. But my goodness, no, the forecast is just so beautiful. I mean, you've got, we start with the Nine of Coins, then we move on to the King of Cups, then we move on to the Hangman, and then we move on to the Seven of Swords. I mean, man, this is, this is a very beautiful energy, you know. So we start with the energy of 
just complete and utter contentment, right? Nine of Coins is someone who is just happy with uh, what's going on around them. You know, this is someone that has worked hard and diligently. They've reached a place in life. There's a sense of just uh, contentment, right? It's like this person knows that they can fund their projects, fund their campaigns, and just, you know, there's a sense of just happiness, right? So this relationship, there's a strong dynamic here. I think that, you know, and obviously I, I haven't been doing a reading about you, but I feel like maybe the person that's watching this, you are someone that's practical, and I think that you are the one that's going to be able to fully ground this person. And so it's almost like if, you know, you are what they're missing, you know? And so once you two come together, it's going to form something so solid and so beautiful. And there's going to be so much dynamism to the relationship that you're just not going to get bored. You're not going to lack any money. You're not going to lack any resources. You're not going to lack any kind of happy or beautiful and blissful experiences. Uh, you're just going to have these things, you know, it's, 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 my goodness, I feel like this person is uh, a soulmate of yours, you know, this is definitely a strong soulmate connection here, because every single card that we got for the relationship screams it. So this relationship, I think, is destined to last. Um, number two, we've got the King of Cups, and it's, it's wonderful that we've got this King of Cups upright, because, you know, the King of Swords reversed and the King of Coins reversed worried me. Because what we have here, essentially, with them is an immaturity when it comes to money. Learning about money, you know? Maybe uh, using money in the wrong way. What we have here with the King of Swords is um, bad decision making, right? So these are the things that um, worried me about this person because they're, they're, it was a little bit chaotic. But here's the thing. When this relationship is going to transform this person so dynamically that they're going to be able to reach a, a, another level, that level is the King of Cups. And the King of Cups is someone who is emotionally stable, knows what they want, how to get it. This is the king that says, I admire everything around me. I know what need, what I need to be happy. I know exactly how I need to obtain uh, what, I, what I need in order to fund my campaign and do what I want to do. This is the king that has everything together, right? So, you know, this relationship is going to definitely do something to this person where it's just going to in many ways, um, develop them. You know, there's going to be this emotional development that takes place with this person. And it's going to lead this person to the hangman, or the relationship to this hangman energy, where there's no need to worry, right? There's no need to go through this kind of uh, worrisome energy. With the hangman, what you have is someone who has decided that they are just going to be one with life. This is the hangman that just says, I am going to enjoy my current existence, my current experience. I'm going to just completely surrender to this, right? And so there's no, there's no worries, there's no anxieties, there's no fears, there's no, you know, lack thereof. All there is is blissful surrender with the hangman, right? So this relationship is something where there's going to be trust. There's going to be love. There's going to be understanding. There is going to just be this energy of just, I want more. But at the same time, it's not going to be invasive in any way. You know, you guys are going to understand each other so well. There's just such a beautiful dynamic to this relationship. You guys balance each other out very, very well. And then with the Seven of Swords, what we have is opportunity. Um, so with the Seven of Swords, you know, we have opportunity. We have also this um, this opportunity to get rid of the energies that you don't need around you, right? So the Seven of Swords, you can always uh, look at that card and, you know, the illustration is of, of people who are backstabbing you or people that don't want what's best for you, right? That are taking from you. And so the fact that you've got that card can also be talking about reaching a place of mental maturity or understanding of the people around you. Um, in this illustration, what we have is a griffin, which is a symbol of mastery, mastery in life, mastery in, in your development, um, just mastery all around. And I feel like that's what this relationship is. This relationship is masterful in every way. You know, there's just such a beautiful, beautiful connection between, between the two of you. So awesome. Wow. Okay. That ended well. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I, <laughs> I was worried about that last part. 
uh, but that ended beautifully. Um, you guys, this is definitely, I feel, a very, very beautiful, blissful connection, uh, a soulmate-like connection. Um, beautiful. So that uh, brings us to the very end of the reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Um, quick reminder, I am offering private readings at this time. So if you are interested in a private reading with me, you are going to have to go to my Etsy store. The link is down below. Thank you. Um, also, leave a comment. All right, I wanna hear from you seekers. If you've left a comment before, you know that I've been responding. Um, I wanna, I love it. I love reading what you seekers write and I love responding back. So go ahead and, and leave a comment, I will respond. Again, thank you for your love. Thank you for everything, Seekers. Bye-bye.